I have two bearings here. Could be a National, could be an NSK, could be a SKF. Who knows, but it lasted 250,000 miles, dude. So I'm gonna show you exactly what bearing brand lasted 250,000 miles. So on the right hand side, we have a National bearing. Uh, bearing number is 510050 by National Main China. This one came out of a Honda Accord V6 2000 with 250,000 miles on it. It's an NSK. So this NSK bearing lasted 250,000 miles. You can see that wear ring right there. I'll put it up to the mic, but you guys can hear what uh, 250,000 miles on a bearing sounds like. Doesn't sound all that good. Take the brand new National one. Nothing smooth as silk. But the amazing thing is the fact that this NSK bearing lasted 250,000 miles. So on the inside here, let me see if I can find it. Let me get a rag. So I think they call this, I wanna say galling. I could be wrong. At the end of this video, I'll put a video that shows uh, from NSK what this is specifically called. I wanna say galling, but uh, I could be wrong. So right there, can you guys see that? There's like pitting on the bearing, on the race, I guess. It's all throughout, except in some spot. It's some spots. It's not. What causes this is moisture in the bearing, the grease and the water mix, and make an acid that etch into this metal. So as the water and the grease uh, combine, it makes an acid that eats into the metal, and uh, starts eating away at your bearings. So the rollers themselves, the balls themselves, were getting galling on there too and it's just eating it away. But uh, it lasted 250,000 miles. That's awesome. That's very impressive for a bearing. But uh, yeah, you guys can see what 250,000 miles looks like on a bearing. It smells like grease and dirt combined together. I've only heard good things about NSK. So the number right here is 45BWD07. 45 Bravo Whiskey David 07. So some serious galling has happened on this bearing. And it was making a really loud whining sound. I mean, you drive down the freeway and it's just whining, howling. Um, that's how I knew it was bad. And it was pretty obvious which side it was coming from as well. NSK, NSK bearings are made in Japan. You can see right there, NSK, the markings Japan. So there you guys go. I just wanted to show you what a uh, bearing lasted 250,000 miles. This NSK bearing from Japan went the distance. Awesome. My local Honda dealership carries them for about 100 bucks a pop. You can find them online a little bit cheaper, but uh, I don't know if they're really um, NSK bearings because there are ripoffs out there. There are counterfeit bearings out there, so just be careful um, where you get them from, what vendor you're picking them up from. I'm pretty sure... Um, well, I don't know. I was going to say, I'm pretty sure Amazon is a quality vendor, but who knows, right? Anybody can sell anything on Amazon. So just be careful where you get them from. This is a national bearing, NSK. SKF is a great bearing as well. If you guys have found this video helpful, please consider subscribing to Bunny's Garage on YouTube. Questions, comments, concerns, you can reach out to me at bunniesgarage at gmail.com. You can follow me on Twitter. And like always, I'll keep them rolling for you. Well, what about damage from contamination? Yeah, well, contamination is a little bit different, but that happens when foreign materials enter the bearing. Now, water and hard particles are the most common. The damage starts on the rolling contact surfaces and eventually leads to flaking and spalling. The condition is worse in grease applications because you can't get that contamination out of the grease. Now, let's look at this large tapered roller bearing ring here that was sent to our Ann Arbor Technical Center for evaluation. Well, this is a classic example of water damage. Now, when water and grease mix together, it forms an acid at all the metal-to-metal -metal contacts in the bearing. So you see all of these small lines? Yeah. That's actually acid etching corrosion. So over time, what happens is, though this may not look like a lot of damage, it eventually turns into this large spall in the load zone. So how can this be avoided? Well, this type of failure can often be avoided by using the right seals and sealing techniques, uh -huh. by using the correct relubrication and maintenance intervals, and perhaps by making housing modifications to help water drainage.